You guys hearing me fine good okay <laughs> wow it's shabbat it is shabbat hagadol on top of all of that um great shabbat before pesach <sighs> just more singing sing one more song uh and um we're gonna use i'm gonna use uh this prayer book kol um and um if you don't have it i can get off the screen for a bit and give you a pdf um but i know some of you probably belong to reconstruction synagogues but if not let me actually let me just do that right now hold on and get the pdf for everybody So while you're here, um, put in the chat and uh, tell everybody, tell us where you're from. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I sort of set this up so it would be a little bit more intimate. Um, I was still kind of uh, the tech challenges of the last uh, last time we did this. I want to make sure I want to try to get better at that. 
but I'm really glad you're here. And, you know, I need Shabbat and I like spending Shabbat with people. Um, and, uh, all right. Aziva Zimrat Yah, written by Chef and Gold, the Reconstructist Rabbi. Um, and Trick, you might remember we used to sing this a long time. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the only song we knew as uh, rabbinical students. Like we sang this song every chance we got um, to the point that it, we stopped singing. <laughs> but I rediscovered. So we're a small group. Like, uh, let's uh, let's do some uh, talk about do some gratitude. There's like 11 things in the chat. Wow, yeah. So oh wow, somebody's from Denver, uh, DC, South Carolina. Uh, so go ahead. I'm just gonna go to the screen. Just like I'm calling somebody and uh, you know say your name and uh, you know maybe something you're looking forward to, um, either for Pesach or whatever. Um, and I'll go. Uh, my name is Rabbi Sandra, and um, I also I use she and her pronouns. And I'm really excited that I get to spend the first night of Pesach with an old friend because uh, her family, my family, we are vaccinated, and so we're going to spend some time together. So I'm just going to Deborah, you're on my left, so I'm going to call on you, and then you call on somebody else, and we'll just go from there. Hi, I'm Deborah. I'm in DC. Um, and I put in the chat, I really am happy to see Trick. I haven't seen her in my, um, seen Trick in a very, very long time. So that's good. Um, I'm just looking forward to having a peaceful weekend. I really am. I don't know what services I'm going to jump into at Seder or just, yeah. So I'm going to go with Trick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trick, they, them. This is Nigel behind me, my kiddo. Um, we're going to be spending the weekend with our, our bubble family um, a mile down the street who Deborah knows, Evan and Jackie, so that the kiddos get to be the focus of, of uh, Pesach. Just call it somebody. Uh... Liz, am I saying that right? Paler? Oh, it's Iz. Um, sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Iz. Say them. Um, I am also just looking forward to a peaceful weekend. Um, and I'll pick CJ. CJ, we can't hear you. I don't know. If you're using an external mic, your uh, speakers might be running through the external mic. You have to change your speakers. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am just looking forward to 
a uh, peaceful weekend. I did get, I just got my uh, driver's permit after uh, like being eligible for like at least a year. Good, congratulations. Just calling somebody. Can you call, just call on somebody. Call on the next person. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Beth Goldberg. Hi, I'm uh, from Northern New Jersey. I'm grateful that we had a day that was 70 degrees. Um, I'm an avid bird watcher, so I got out to do some birding and looking forward to spending uh, the uh, Seder with my fully vaccinated family. Um, William. Um, hi, my name is William. I am looking for, even though we can't be in person, I am looking forward to using the Gata that my mother-in-law have worked on. Me and my mother-in-law have worked on together for the past week or so. Uh, we've been meaning to do this for a couple of years and we finally got a chance to do that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Jessica, have you gone yet? Hi, uh, I'm Jessica. So uh, I am looking forward to trying out a couple of new kosher for Passover recipes. Cooking is always fun for me and kind of forces me to try new things. So looking forward to that. Um, I guess. Mark, the next person. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, sorry, my video is, is not working right now. It, every time I turn it on in a Zoom meeting lately, it kicks me out. So I'm going to leave it off for now. Um, I am looking forward to having a weekend where I'm not working. I'm not on call. I can just spend the rest of the night this weekend. Uh, on my own, so that's pretty great. Hi, Lila. Thanks, Mark. Um, uh, I hope your your video gets fixed at some point. I love seeing your face, but I totally understand, and it's totally okay that your that your camera's not on. Lillian, welcome. We're just uh, saying um, uh, who we are, um, uh, where you're from, and what you're grateful for for Pesach or what you're grateful for in general. Hi, I'm Lillian. Um, I'm in North Carolina in uh, the central part of North Carolina, not native to here, a transplant from the New York metro area, um, just from November. Um, I am grateful for the amazing uh, sunshine and all the budding flowers and trees. And um, like I actually picked up a branch that has all these flowers on it. I'm just like, wow, I love this weather. And I love, I'm grateful that I'm with my family. I'm reunited with my kids, my granddaughter, um, who's just, uh, golly, um, like 16 months old now. Um, so it's a real delight. And I think Oh, is that it? That's all I need to answer, right? <laughs> That's right. Where are you from? Where are you in North Carolina? I'm in North Carolina too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm in Sandy Ridge. It's about an hour north of Winston Salem and uh, Greensboro. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've recently heard that about Sandy Ridge. I'm not sure why, but um. yeah, it's like this blooming um, part, like sub, sort of suburb, and because it's just an hour out, you know, from Winston Salem mm -hmm. and uh, Greensboro. So it's a nice drive. It's, you know, there's three, three main routes that you can go to get to those. And, um, you know, once you get past that, we're in the middle of nowhere because <laughs> we're in the mountains, mm -hmm. um, you know, having been in the New York metro area for like, you know, a quarter of my life and then growing up in Philadelphia, like I've been big city kind of person, but this last year has been a year of major transformations and changes. Um, I was working on a farm for the majority of last year. So, um, <laughs> so now, welcome. yeah. Welcome. Thank you. I'm sorry, what? Do this we... is a breath of fresh air. You know? oh, oh, good. I'm glad you're here. Um, so, um, 
Deborah, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to um, make you a, if this is okay, a co-host, just in case other people try to come in and I don't see them. Um, and so it should say that if, if you don't want that responsibility. No, that's, fine. that's okay. I think Trick has one more um, intro to do. Oh, I'm, yeah. Okay. Hey, go ahead. Who's the young, young person? Nigel decided to say hi. Hi, hi. Nigel. I just, I only see your hand. There you are. Your beautiful face. Oh, uh, wow. All right, so we're gonna light some Shabbat candles. If you have candles of your own, um, let's go feel free to light them. I've got this piece here. Uh, it's right here. Uh, and these little travel candles that I have right here. Okay. <sighs> Baruch atah Adonai, Elokeinu melech haolam, Asher kirishanu mitzvotav, V'tzivanu lehad lignet shel shabbat. Just in case. All right. All right. So I'm going to put in the chat feature again because I know we've got a few other people who have arrived. And um, so the uh, prayer book we're using is uh, Colin Um The PDF is a little hard to navigate. Um, and my hope is one day to just make a zoom see door so um we're going to start with yadid nefesh which is on page nine i'm just going to do the first verse yadid nefesh av harachama meshok avdecha el retzonecha Ya roots of Decha Kemo Aya Yishta Havel Muhadarecha Teravlo Yedidu Techa Meno Fetsu Vehotam I just took a sneak peek there is this we are simultaneously live streaming on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and um, our new zoom, uh, no, no, excuse me, our new uh, YouTube channel uh, called Hapanim. So I'm going to go and check those, see how they're doing later. But I just checked the Facebook and it is actually, actually working. Shalom Aleichem, bringing in the messengers of peace, page 13. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharim, Malachi Yon, Honi Melech, Malachi Hamalachim, Hakadosh Baruch. Bohem la shalom, Malachi ha shalom, Malachi yon. Mi melech, Malachi ha malachim, ha kadosh baruhu. Bahu nil shalom, malakeh ha shalom, 
We're going to sing Lachadodi, and um, we're going to sing. We're going to sing the first verse, the second verse. Let's just yeah, we'll do the first verse. Well, well, we'll do the first verse um, on page forty-one, and then the first verse on page forty-three, and then the first and last verse on page. Wait, wait, no, the first verse, the first verse on each page, and then the last page. We'll do the last two. Lech adu di li prakala yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat ne kabela lech adu di li prakala yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat ne kabela Shamo vezaho bedi borechad ish me anu elam yuchad Adonai echad ushemo echad leshem lotiferet velitila. Hey, lecha do di li krat kala, yala la, yala la, yala la, pene shabbat, ne kabela, ha, lecha do di li krat kala, yala la, yala la, yala la, pene shabbat, ne kabela, ha, Likras Shabbat Lechu Velecha Ki Mecho Abraha Merosh Mekerem Nesucha Sof Maase Bamak Shabbatila Hey, lecha do di li krata la yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat ne kabela ha lecha do di li krata la yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat ne kabela ha he tore he tore Kive ore Pumi uri 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 Shida beri Kevor Adonai Nagila Khe lecha do di li krat kala Yala la yala la yala la Pene Shabbat Lecha vela Lecha do di li krat kala Yala la yala la yala la Pene Shabbat Lecha vela When we get to the last verse You can rise in body and spirit when we get there Or you can stay seated, it doesn't matter, it's all good Yaminus moti frutzi veta dona tarisi ayarish ben pasi venis mecha venagila 
Hey, lecha do di li kraka la yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat ne kabela ha lecha do di li kraka la yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat ne kabela ha voli shalom. A tered bala gam besimcha uv slocha toremune am segula boi chala boi chala helecha do di li krat kala yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat. Lekabela ha lekado di li krakala yala la yala la yala la pene shabbat lekabela ha. You know there is a psalm for every day of the week, and the psalm for Saturday is Psalm ninety-two. You can find the beginning of it on page 49. Tov lehodot l'adonai uzam el esimcha el yon lahagit babokeh azecha ve'emunatecha Ya <laughs> So tonight we're going to do an abbreviated service. We're going to do just Kabbalat Shabbat. Um, I'm going to th add to that the Shema. Um, and then we're going to uh, do prayer for healing. And we'll say Kaddish. Um, oh, and somewhere in the middle of that, I want to do just a little bit of Torah. Um, but right now I'm going to do Hatsi Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadal, Shemeraba, Biama Divra, Hirate, Viam Lehma Hute, Behae, Hovio, Mehom, Ufrae de Kobet Israel. Bagala, Bagala, Uvis man Kari, Vimeru, Amen. Yehish me Rabba Mevorach, Layalam Ume Amaya, Yid Barak, Yid Barak, Vish Debak, Vipar Arvi, Chaman, Vidna Se, Vita Dar, Vita Le, Vita Lo, Shmeda Kudasha, Brehu, Leila, Mikobra Hata, Vashirata, that's why I smoked it. <laughs> hey, sweetie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You gotta love Zoom, I swear. Like, <laughs> I've never tried to light candles in my office and I probably won't ever do that again. <laughs> I thought it stopped, there it is. I don't really know. Hey, Susan. Just fan it, just fan it. Fan it, just fan it. Thank you. 
Okay, well, <laughs> really, I'm not going to light candles anymore. <laughs> the door open. <laughs> oh, so funny. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Actually, it happened as I went to grab my guitar and I was a little confused. Um, you know, so one of the things that I love about the Shema, especially in this time of, of COVID, is that, you know, we're commanded to say the Shema when we rise up and we lie down. And um, whenever we say the Shema, it is preceded by love. So in the morning, we say Hava Rabbah, all about, um, where we pray and sing about all an abundance of love. And in the evening, we sing Ahavat Olam. Um, and then our the rabbis wanted us to move immediately from love into the Shema. There's actually not supposed to be any kavanot, there's our kavanah or intention. You're supposed to go straight in, straight from Ahavat Olam into the Shema or straight from Ava Rabbah. Um, and this is also if you're wearing a talit in the morning, you grab the grab it. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you because it it's uh it's one of the like beautiful gifts I think about um the people who came up with our liturgy so i'm going to sing the shema um it's a it's a shema that, that i wrote um and in this time of like craziness and covid where um we need we need to listen to people who are smarter than us so that we can all get well um and so i'm gonna sing my version and then move into the one that is um, our trope. Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Shema Israel shall love your God with all your heart and all your soul. Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Shema Israel Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echa et Adonai Elochecha Bechola <laughs> 
ושבתך בביתך, ובלכתך בדרך, ושוכחך ובחומך, ושרתם ליוד על ידך, והיו תותפות בין עיניך, ובטבתם על מזוזות ביתך, ובישרך. Adonai Elohim Emet. So, um, this is Shabbat Hagadol. Um, and for many of you who watch me in the morning, I for Zoom, I don't really like to uh, read a Devar. <laughs> um, I can, and I, I can do that well. Um, and it just, I feel like it just prevents me from looking at you all. So I often have outlines in my head and sort of talk about whatever comes to, comes to my mind. And um, what's coming to my mind right now is that we are about to go into uh, Pesach. And um, we are, um, as a society, so like we are, we are, we are getting our freedom from Mitzrayim. And I don't translate Mitzrayim as Egypt. Uh, for a variety of reasons, just because there's a modern Egypt, and I don't think that's fair. So I often say, and many rabbis make this choice of Mitzrayim is the place of pain, the place of constriction, um, the narrow place, all valid translations for Mitzrayim, because that's what it was. It was a place of pain, the narrow place. And um, we are, somebody's cutting the grass. Um, we are, um, about to get our freedom. And you could say we're like at the water's edge um, because, you know, Mitzrayim is behind us and we're on our way to freedom. And today I kind of think of Mitzrayim as, you know, COVID, <laughs> COVID, um, racism and COVID. We have been through a lot this past year. Um, and I think because we were in isolation and caused us to do a lot of reflection, at least I hope it caused, I know it caused me to do a lot of reflection. And um, as we get to the water and on our moving on our way to freedom and hopefully liberation, before we go into the water, our weight in the water, um, we need to do what um, uh, Judaism calls Heshbon HaNefesh. It's something that happens, usually people usually do this during the month of Elul, the month before Rosh Hashanah, before the High Holidays, but it's when you do this sort of internal deep reflection of who you are as a person, who you want to be. And many rabbis, including myself, have been saying like our society needs to do that as we all begin to get vaccinated and we return to some level of normalcy, because we're not going back, we're not going back to Mitzrayim. Um, of any Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim of, 20, of 2019 or the Mitzrayim before that. We are emerging into something and we need to decide as a society, as Jews, as a larger American society or a larger world society, who we want to be as a people. And we need to do this sort of internal accounting, accounting of ourselves um, to be better. And that's the only way that we're going to move into liberation because you get to freedom then you get to liberation and we're not at liberation we want to be um and so you know my, my i was vac i've gotten both my vaccines um my um my wife is halfway through hers um and that and it is a it is a sense of freedom of freedom um you know i'm still wearing a mask i'm still doing all that stuff but i do feel like I have this additional coat of armor um, because the, the people who know better <laughs> are telling me that I, you know, even my doctor was like saying, like, you can really do anything now, you know, but still wear your mask. And it has given me more of a sense of freedom. And I, I wish that for everyone. And, I, and I'll be glad when our entire society world gets vaccinated. Um, but I'm going to, well, I want you to unmute yourselves and I want to talk for a little bit about. Um, what are you holding on to? What are you thinking about as we move into as we move into Passover? Um, what are you hoping to, uh, to come through now that we're emerging from the narrow place 
what are you wishing for or hoping for? Well, I, I realized that there's, I need a lot fewer things than I thought I did. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm more content with um, spending time uh, out of doors. And um, it just, uh, it, in some respects, it was less stressful for me than the usual running around that I have to do and errands and obligations I place on myself. So um, I learned a lot, as you said, it, it gave me time to reflect uh, quite a bit. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'll go if no one else is. Um, well, I'm a grad student and this has been a particularly difficult year for me because a lot of the ways that I earn my living just weren't possible being teaching colleges. Uh, I also had a second job at a travel agency that unfortunately did not last very long. Um, but what I want to take from this is that I am still very passionate about what I study. And it's a resilience and a need to keep going for it and knowing that I can make it through the hard times and emerge to something better. Thank you. Um, so I'm a teacher and, um, I think a lot of teachers have had the same experience. They've shared the same experience of that things begin to blur as we're teaching virtually. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, suddenly it's Friday, suddenly it's a month later, suddenly it's six months later. Um, and especially, you know, having, um, being blessed to have Nige in my home. Um, I hope to just really keep moving through life with more intentionality and not allowing time to slide, but um, holding on to each moment. Um. As it began to write in the chat for me, um, I began a practice a couple of years ago, counting the Omer, um, which is this, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. Um, cool. So I didn't know about it all my life. I'm 52 <laughs> and uh, I just learned about it. And it's it's this amazing way to embody like the all the different, um, important values in Judaism of the Sefer Rot and just how it comes through in your body and in your mind and in your heart. And I haven't yet to actually do all 49 days consecutively. <laughs> um, but uh, every year, like since I started, like I get a little, like a little bit more intention. So I hope to this year, because especially my friend, sorry, I'm just so excited. Same name. Well, I'm Shari Lillian um, by birth. But so my friend Shari <laughs> Berkowitz with Bayit published this Counting the Omer coloring book. And I'm so excited because I've done the app a couple of times and it's a lot of journaling. Um, but this is like a mindful way to like embody the, the qualities of what's important in Judaism. And it's like love and peace and wisdom. And, and it's all these blend, it's just, I don't know, it's such an incredible practice. I hope that maybe you'll talk more about it. Cause like, again, I've just learning, um, but that's what I'm, my, I'm hoping to come through because it does bring like that reflection you were talking about in Rosh Hashanah, it's also happening now or it can happen now that reflection. Um, and there's amazing guides to how to do it. You know, you don't have to do, figure it out by yourself. It's, you know, with all our technology <laughs> there's so much available online. Yeah, sure. I'll definitely share this. <laughs> yeah, th thank yeah, thank you for that. Like, I love, you know, every year when it, I tell myself I'm not gonna like publicly count the Omer for the last five years, I have in a very public way. I think five years. I'm not sure, but in a very public way, usually it's just like I I, I look at the sort of words for the day, the Sefer Road, the you know the two parts, and then I just sort of reflect on it. Um, and I, it was really helpful for me last year to do it in uh, isolation. 
And also my wife reminds me too. She's like, are you going to count the Omer? I was like, no, I don't know. She's like, I think you should. <laughs> so, yeah. Any other thoughts? I should, I just Google, I just went to the uh, Facebook page and there's um, people watching. Someone's from Portugal, Andre, and there's Carrie and my friend, Anthony. Well, cool. This little experiments are working. <laughs> um, so any other thoughts about Pesach? Um, it feels a little hard because this is the first year that I'm, you know, well, last year I did a Zoom Seder, but I don't even know if I'm doing a Zoom Seder, Seder this year, so mm -hmm. it's a little strange. I, um, I will probably do something, just myself at home yeah. tomorrow. Well, thank you for reminding me. I just realized I had the Omer app, so I want to be sure that I yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Did you can hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. CJ, we can hear you. It's my turn. Okay. It, it's my turn, right? Yeah, if you want if you wanna, you know, no pressure, if you wanna say something when there's no order. Okay. Um, I've, I guess it's been a place where I've had to uh, be more independent than I thought I could be, but um, I'm hoping that I can hold on to myself until I don't have to anymore, mm -hmm. you know, until I can not have to do that anymore. Yeah. Thank you. And if you don't want to say anything out loud, you can put it in the chat. Um, and we're going to um, move to Misha Barra, prayer for healing. And uh, if you are um, so moved, please add in the chat um, those that you were thinking about that could use a prayer for healing. And um, we will... Uh, lift their names up together as a community. Uh, I'm going to sing Debbie Friedman's Misha Barra prayer, which is not actually in the Sudur. Um, and, um, but I, I'm, I know many of you have, have heard it before. Uh, I want to offer a prayer for healing for my dad, who is, um, he was sick last week, um, sick enough to go to the hospital. My, his wife contacted me, but he texted me, said, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> um my dad's a big country boy um but uh uh he's which i guess he's doing fine he must be doing fine because his wife who i love dearly like if if she were my mom um um would tell me if there was something wrong so i'm offering his prayer for healing for my dad charles lawson and we'll also lift up uh roy rory merriweather eileen greenberg and jennifer novak um and uh you know, I always do this in the morning, but if you pause, um, I guess I should check the Facebook page too. Um, if you pause, I mean, um, if, if, um, there's, I know there's a delay and I will pause to say, oh, but you don't want to hear that. Okay. Um, okay. So if you're on Facebook and you want to offer a prayer for healing, um, or let me know, and I will also say their names. And what I was trying to say very clumsily is, I know there's a delay, and um, if a name pops up after I've started saying it, I will pause to say the name. So here goes. Misha Bera Avotenu Mekor Habraha Limotenu May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say 
Amen. Nishaberach imotenu mekor habraha liavotenu. Bless those in need of healing with reflua, reflua shlema. The renewal of body, renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. We now move uh, to Mourner's Kaddish, and Mourner's Kaddish can be found on page 451. And... Um, if you are in the period of Shloshim, the 30 days of mourning, or if it's the Yort site anniversary of someone's passing, or you're in the year of mourning, I invite you to um, to add the names. Actually, I invite you to unmute yourself and lift up. Tell tell us the name of the, the person you're remembering. And um, it, or if, it, if, if you're just remembering somebody who has passed, um, I invite you to go ahead and unmute yourself or put the name in the chat so that we um, can honor their memory together. Um, oh, and I also want to lift up the name of Dr. H, my principal, and struggling with her brother contracting COVID and offer a Dr. H and Misha Barach. I didn't see that earlier. Um, um, may Dr. H have a speedy recovery. And um, so I'm going to read this kavanah now that's on page 450. In reciting uh, the Kaddish, we affirm our awareness of holiness in, in our world. Much of our experience of divine goodness, grace, and love has come to us through those whose lives have touched our own. And so today we remember all of those who are no longer with us. And I want to add my mother, Flora Mae Lawson, who passed away um, on Tisha B'Av this past summer. Um, and... Um, um, someone, a carry on Facebook is, uh, I'm saying Kaddish for my grandmother, Hazel Black, who passed away in February. Um, may all of their memories be a blessing. And as we recite Kaddish, we invoke the transcendent power of love and caring as we sanctify God's name. So please join me. Um, I have, I will, I'm, I'm so clumsy. Um, I'm leaning into the, uh, what a lot of my colleagues have been doing, um, which is to all of us unmute, um, for Kaddish. It is not a pretty sound. <laughs> um, it's kind of sort of a cacophony, but I think it's a way for us on Zoom to recite Kaddish together. So please, um, join me. Um, you can rise in body or spirit or whatever is comfortable for you. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash. Yama Dura Yurte, Yam Lich Malkute, Bechayapon, Ufiomechon, Ufaye de Kolbet, Israel, Badala of Isman Kariv, Vimru, Amen. Yehesh Mirabad, Arak, Weolam, Ume, Amaya. I say shalom, Ruma. We are shalom. Aleinu ve'al kodesh for us. Amen. May the one who create peace and harmony create peace and harmony for all of us down here on earth. Oh, say shalom. Beramah, who I say, 
Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, my friends. Um, I, as I said, this is Shabbat and Shmuz, and I will. We can Shmuz. You can go if you want. If you can hang out um, for a little while um, and chat. Um, uh, we did this last time, and it was it was kind of cool talking to people. Um, but um, if I don't see you. Well, I'm sure I'll see some of you, but Chag um, Sameach, and, you know, may this be a wonderful holiday time for you. So, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for the service. Thank you. Shabbat this was fun. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you, Trick. <laughs> Good to and see nice you, to meet. Nice to meet Nigel as well. <laughs> Nigel, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm a real silly kid. Yep. <laughs> yes. Well. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Is there a little? critter down there yeah. jessica okay <laughs> i have bridget she's below my feet yeah um, this is tiger he's almost always permanently attached to my lap in some yeah form. yeah bridget lives under my desk hold on oops here she is and she always knows it when it's five o'clock because <laughs> she'll sleep there all day long and then five o'clock will come and she's like hey <laughs> yeah my other cat hippolyta is running around upstairs doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian, I hope we get to meet in person since you're so close. Yeah, uh -huh. that would be phenomenal. Where are you exactly? I'm in Burlington. I, uh, I, yeah, I see it. It's, you, nobody lives here. <laughs> it's, no, it's I, like, I, I know just like, okay, yeah. I know where I am and I know Durham and I've learned like Mount Airy and Madison and then like somewhere over there is Durham, uh, I mean, uh, Raleigh and like yeah. and that way. <laughs> If you if you've heard of Elon University, yes, yes, yeah. So I was the I was the Jewish chaplain at Elon until yes, last yes, month. So yes, yes, and yes. Elon is uh, Burlington is just the town over. Okay. Um, so that's that's where I live. It's, yeah, not far at all. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And is is your temple? Are you involved with the temple in addition to this, or this is? No, this is something. It's oh, a okay. it's it's a it's a startup. Yeah, slowly, yeah. slowly. Um, um it sort of grew out of covid so my my day job is i'm the the um director of racial diversity equity and inclusion for reconstructing judaism yes, yes. and um i am slowly trying to build this community kol hapanim that centers uh leaders of color and spiritual leadership positions and so last month it was uh services or not last month was it no it was a week or two ago um it, services were led by myself and Rabbi Mira Rivera. She's a wonderful rabbi um, in New York. Um, and yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, mm -hmm. next month, um, we're going to have uh, uh, the 6th, 12th or something like that. Um, Havdala will be led by Ko uh, Dr. Koach Baruch Frazier, who's a rabbinical student, um, also a person of color, black trans person. And uh, um, and yeah, we'll see. This is, you know, there's, there's a lot of Jews of color out there and, um, to sort of, you know, let, I want to lift them up and there's a lot of rabbinical and cantorial students of color and give them an opportunity to have internships and lead. Um, um, and truth be told, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is that like, you know, rabbis in color and, uh, rabbinical students of color still face a huge amount of discrimination and racism in the hiring process. And if, if they don't get the experience they need, it's going to, you know, because of racism, it's going to be really hard for them to, to thrive. And uh, I wrote an op-ed piece about that, that that was on eJewish Learning today, that I, I am really concerned about their ability to thrive. And um, they just want to be, you know, they want to be rabbis and cantors, and they should be. And I want to help them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I've been following you. You did a, a Shabbat service with... Um, the unit um congregation in wisconsin um back 
in the beginning of COVID or mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. last summer. I, I don't remember. Time is all mushed together. No, right? it is. It's all blurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it was just like I I don't know if I'd really been following you before that, but mm -hmm. then seeing what you were about and I was just so like it was just really beautiful what you did and like learning more about who you are. I think mm -hmm. pre going to the service, I wanted to know who you were. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, oh, like she has this whole other thing that's going on. And yeah, yeah. This, I mean, you're inspiring and, and just like, wow, you know, like all the things you do, what you write, what you sing and what you're trying yeah. to do for, you know, cause it's, it's true. Like it's, I mean, in my experience, it's always been white males. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's only, through my temple that I've gone to in New York, that it was a female rabbi. And that was like my first real, like, you know, she was the yeah. like innovator for herself and, yeah, uh, you know, so expanding and just like, okay, I want more of this. <laughs> yeah. I was actually, I was talking to, I was talking to one of the first queer rabbis out there and um, I, th I might've been one of the few people who knew she, who she was. Uh -huh. And I was texting my friends in the call, like, you need to know who this person is. And they're like, why? Yeah. I did. And then what I said to her, I said, thank you for making my life a little easier, um, you know, for all the crap that she had to put up with. Um, uh -huh. so. Yeah, yeah. Rabbi Lori is incredible. Because I lived out there for a year. Mm -hmm. That was part of my like, journey last year. Um, wow. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, can't wait to meet you in, in person. Yeah. yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. And then are you doing something for, for Passover or you're not? I'm not. I'm just going to, um, being a campus rabbi, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually grateful this, this Passover that I don't have to lead anything. Uh -huh. Um, it's good to have a little break. Um, and last, last as a rabbi last year, his Passover was a bit stressful because <laughs> it was the first holiday that we had to, figure out and every time I came up with a plan I had to throw it out the window. um and uh we had some really great students that helped us think that through but to be able to chill and have that time off I'm looking forward to that yeah it must be huge yeah. Yeah. and what is everybody else's plans I heard Deborah says she's not sure about going to Passover um and there's so many on for me it's it's online opportunities that I've discovered mm -hmm. over this past year and, and attending Passover in London. While I'm here in North Carolina, I'm attending Passover in California and I'm it's here. Very, it's very <laughs> like I just find people, you know, the organizations that just kind of go 